Indolanka fishing controversy. Now, what really is the issue here? Indian fishermen have been protesting for days against uh, Indian fishermen being arrested in Sri Lanka. And Sri Lankan fishermen are lamenting that not enough steps are being taken to protect the sea of Sri Lanka. Well, we'll have to first identify the issue here. Now, this is India. This is Sri Lanka. This is the border between India and Sri Lanka. Now, and this border was agreed to in the 1970s between the two countries. And while the agreement was drawn up on this border and while these areas were demarcated as those areas belong to India and these areas belong to Sri Lanka, it was agreed that the Kachatibu Island would be the furthermost island that is owned by Sri Lanka. And until the Kachatibu Island, and just a little bit ahead of that, would be the territorial waters of Sri Lanka. Now, what's been happening for many, many decades is that Indian fishermen come towards this border from India, then they encroach into Sri Lankan waters, the Sea of Sri Lanka, that is where they encroach into, and they plunder Sri Lankan resources. Now, this narrow strip of sea that is there between India and Sri Lanka is a resource-rich area, and this portion of it, obviously, that is on this side of the border towards Sri Lanka is part of the Sea of Sri Lanka that is eight times the size of Sri Lanka and this is the narrowest strip of sea that is available in the Sea of Sri Lanka. Now what's been happening for many decades is the fact that towards the evening large multi-day fishing trawlers from India begin their voyage towards Sri Lanka and Come dawn, these ships are in Sri Lankan waters, especially surrounding the Kachatibu Island. Now, I myself uh, was privy to this fact uh, because several years ago, when we visited the Kachatibu Island for the Kachatibu Feast, uh, I was afforded an opportunity to sit there towards the evening uh, and observe what really happens. And you can visibly see these massive fishing trawlers coming towards Sri Lanka. Now, with these fishing trawlers coming towards Sri Lanka by dawn, early morning the next day, these fishing trawlers have surrounded the entire area. The area almost looks like a, a string of lights, if you will, in a park. That's the number, that's the magnitude in which these ships come towards the waters of Sri Lanka. The, this is how they encroach into the sea of Sri Lanka and this is the level of resources that they take back uh, to India and of course deprive Sri Lankan fisher folk of these privileges. Now, what these Indian trawlers do is they are massive trawlers. Compared to Sri Lankan uh, fishing vessels, they are extremely massive and they travel in pairs. And between these two fishing trawlers is a net that has been lodged to a heavy metal metallic object that runs across the bottom of the sea. Now this practice is known as bottom trawling and this is highly detrimental uh, to the marine environment and it is in fact a banned fishing practice here in Sri Lanka. But this is the kind of fishing practices uh, that are practiced in this, in the sea of Sri Lanka when these Indian fishermen encroach into our waters. Now don't take our word for it. Listen to uh, Professor M. M. Hakim from the University of Colombo as he explains how this has been happening for generations and how this is affecting Sri Lanka. They come to Sri Lanka from Nagapatnam, Kodikkarai, Rameshwaram and Pamban. This dotted line shows that Sri Lankan maritime border. At approximately 8 p.m., they gradually begin entering the sea of Sri Lanka. By 10 p.m., most of the Indian vessels have reached Sri Lankan territory. At 1 a.m., approximately 2,500 vessels typically enter the sea of Sri Lanka. They engage in fishing activities on Sundays, Wednesdays and Saturdays returning by 4 a.m. Legally, this constitutes a violation of Sri Lanka's sovereignty and the Indo-Lanka agreement. It also raises the question of whether India condones the violation of Sri Lankan sovereignty by its fishermen. The Indian National Congress organized the protest led by MP Vijay Vasan. The government of Sri Lanka detains our fisherfolk and damages their boats. 
This has led to protests and there are demands for the fisher folk to be released. The central government of India should intervene immediately to find a solution. There is a perception that the BJP-led central government has not prioritized the concerns of these fisher folk. The central government should act to rescue the fishermen. The Prime Minister is coming to Kulasekarapuram tomorrow. On behalf of All India Congress Committee, under my leadership, we are protesting the central government's inaction in releasing the fisher folk. We will hold a peaceful protest tomorrow to demand their release. Fisher folk from Rameshwaram have been engaging in a strike exceeding a week, demanding the release of four of their counterparts from Tamil Nadu and other fisher folk who have been incarcerated in Sri Lanka. This protest escalated into a continuous hunger strike over two days. Earlier this month, on two separate occasions, the Kites Magistrate handed down sentences to four Tamil Nadu fishers who were apprehended by the Sri Lanka Navy for encroaching upon the Sea of Sri Lanka and engaging in fishing activities. Three of these individuals were sentenced to imprisonment for violating the country's territorial waters using GPS technology. This punitive action was taken as these fisher folk previously released on suspended sentences were found to be repeated the same offences. Sri Lankan fisher folk held a media briefing in Mana today. They responded to a statement made by the chairman of the Rameshwaram Troller Fishermen's Association. How many millions have I given you? Give it all back to me and then tell me not to come to Kachatyu and not engage in fishing activities. Give it all back. You are reaping the benefits of my wet. Your livelihood is based on it. I feed you. 100,000 people are in refugee camps. They are also fed with my money. Indre. The High Commission of India should be informed about this matter. India should immediately apologize to the people of Sri Lanka for violating the maritime border. The use of GPS indicates that they are knowingly exploiting resources in the sea of Sri Lanka. They oppose Sri Lanka's legal actions and protests against our actions and refuse to attend the Kachatiyu feast. They prevented others from attending this event. We strongly condemn these. Meanwhile, the Indian High Commissioner of Sri Lanka, Santosh Jha, discussed the matter with Fisheries Minister Douglas Devananda. I informed them that we cannot give permission for a practice that has been banned. I informed them that if India continues to influence the Sri Lankan government, I will resign from my cabinet portfolio and join the fisher folk in their struggle for the sea. There is a law that is in force in our country since 2018. We can release them if they come into our sea for the first time. But if they encroach into our sea more than one time, they will be punished. I believe that it is fair. Fisheries associations in Jaffna have said that they are going to protest in the sea. Will you support them? I will not attend it without first resigning from my ministry. But if I resign, I too will attend it. Now, the division of this narrow strip of sea between India and Sri Lanka was not a contentious matter during the time of the British rule, of course, because both India and Sri Lanka were under the British rule. For them, everything was the same. But how, however, of course, uh, following independence, for the first time, India and Sri Lanka agreed to this border in the year 1974. That was when the initial agreement was made uh, and even uh, the the sea, the narrow sea area between India and Sri Lanka were divided. It was a consensus. It was accepted internationally. However, there were issues like this that existed at that time as well. 1979, uh, the laws were revisited. They were revised. Uh, back again in 2005, uh, 2018, these laws were revised again. But despite these multiple revisions and uh, the consensus that has been reached between India and Sri Lanka, for this to be the border between uh, in this narrow strip of sea and that neither country would encroach on each other's borders that has not been the case for at least the several decades that have passed and this of course has seriously affected the fisher folk in the north it has affected Sri Lanka as a whole because the sea onto which these Indian fisher folk encroach upon is none other than the sea of Sri Lanka you cannot come from another country and engage in fishing in Sri Lanka waters. Not just fishing, they most commonly engage in illegal fishing methods such as bottom trawling. The Navy is bound to enforce in the Sri Lankan law. We try our best to prevent them from entering Sri Lankan waters and keeping them away. 
We always advise them that they are entering Sri Lankan waters and only arrest them if they repeatedly disregard orders and continue to engage in fishing activities. All arrests were made in this manner. All fishing boats have GPS so they are aware that they are in Sri Lankan waters and they cannot be unaware. The technology is used in Indian fishing vessels. We also have patrol methods to inform them they are in Sri Lankan waters and ask them to leave. Most vessels leave, but some disregard the orders and continue efforts to enter Sri Lankan waters. That is when we make arrests. <laughs> A senior official of the Ministry of Fisheries said the subject minister discussed this issue with the President and the Indian High Commissioner yesterday. The Fisheries Ministry added that although talks were held between the two countries to resolve the fishing controversy, the talks had stalled for about one year. Sri Lanka had requested the Indian government for a discussion through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, however no response was given. <laughs> The fishing vessels that are seized over time are released for the birthdays of the heads of state of India and Sri Lanka and for respective national days. Evading Sri Lankan waters is a serious offence. That is why cases are filed in Sri Lankan courts and a small amount of vessels are seized and fishing folk are arrested. This should be resolved by diplomatic means between the leaders of the two states. Well, professionals and fisher folk in the north are calling for this issue to be settled diplomatically. Of course, that's uh, the most, the best course of action that both countries can take at this point of time. But for those of you who think that this is only an issue that affects the north of Sri Lanka, or this is only an issue that affects the fisher folk in the north of Sri Lanka, and therefore we need not worry too much about this, uh, I'm sorry to say, but you're wrong. This is an issue that in affects the entirety of Sri Lanka. This is the sea of Sri Lanka. The resources, the marine resources that are being plundered are not just owned by the fisher folk in the north, they are owned by all Sri Lankans. They are owned by Sri Lanka as a country because this is the sea of Sri Lanka. The fisher folk in the north, the fisher folk in the south, uh, the general public across the island, there is absolutely no difference. So this is clearly not an issue that only affects the fisher folk in the north, because this similarly affects fisher folk in the south and also the general public in Sri Lanka as a whole. We've seen in recent times uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister of India, coming to the southern part of India saying, our land for our people. Well, here in Sri Lanka also, this is our land. Sri Lanka is our land. And it's time we step up to protect our land and not forgetting our sea, which is eight times the landmass of Sri Lanka. And of course, it's to the best interest of both countries that these matters be settled diplomatically. Just imagine if such encroachments of thousands of fishermen happen on a daily basis in any other country. How would those countries react? What kind of response would they make? Would it be stern or would it be mild? Well, Sri Lanka needs to seriously look into this issue as this is affecting the livelihoods of many fisher folk in the north and of course affecting the status of Sri Lanka as a country. Sri Lanka's sovereignty is being questioned here and it's to the best interest of both countries that these matters be settled diplomatically and steps need to be taken for sure.